economic data out this morning points to a big bounce back in consumer spending up uh, 8% in it may uh, after a historic low that we saw in April. The question is how sustainable are some of these levels uh, and the recovery that we've seen so far? Let's bring in Mark Zandi. He is the chief economist at Moody's Analytics. And Mark, um, I guess a broader question right now that we've been asking is where are we in the recovery cycle right now? Well, we're in recovery, early stages. Uh, the recession ended uh, likely in May, so June would be the first recovery month. Um, so we're, um, we're, all, we're, all, we're 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 moving forward. Uh, a lot of headwinds dead ahead, and a lot of things have to go the right way to avoid falling back into recession. But um, but right now we're in recovery mode. So much of the economic recovery, of course, contingent on how quickly the, the labor market bounces back. I've been looking at your report here where you know you recently revised your outlook on the employment front in part because of the uptick, for example, that you've seen in bankruptcy filings. You know, we got the announcement from yesterday uh, from Macy's, for example, saying they're going to be laying off a, um, a significant number of their employees. More of those reports likely to follow. Uh, when you look at those filings, what does that tell you about where the job losses are, are likely to accelerate and how far we are from realizing the, the totality of the economic damage? Yeah, our forecast has not changed. It's been uh, pretty stable since we caught up. Obviously, we're playing catch up through the month of March, but it's been fairly uh, stable since April. And, you know, my sense is that, well, we we lost a little over 20 million jobs uh, in um uh, in uh, uh, March and April, we got a couple million back in May, and we'll probably recover half of the lost jobs, uh, uh, 10, 11 million by Labor Day. And I, I think that's where we're gonna stay for a while until we're on the other side of the pandemic. I, I just don't see us getting those a lot of those jobs back while there's social distancing going on, while there's the uncertainty around the virus itself, um, while those bankruptcies and failures you talked about are in, in full swing. So I, I think we kind of go sideways until the, the pandemic is over. And obviously that depends on a vaccine or a therapy that's widely distributed and adopted. And uh, I don't know when that'll be, but it'll, it won't be until then that the economy really kicks into gear and we start getting all those jobs back. So if we get half of those jobs back by Labor Day, I mean, what, what happens to the other half? Are, are those jobs permanently lost? Some are. Uh, you know, I do think we are going to see some fundamental shifts in some industries that are just gotten creamed here. You know, the airlines, hotels, accommodation. I just don't see business travel coming back uh, to where it was pre-COVID anytime in the foreseeable future. Retail, a lot of the brick and mortar retail jobs, they were evaporating slowly over time because of the online competition, but they're gone. Uh, and they're not coming back. Uh, so, you know, those jobs, they're, they're not coming back. And, and the folks that worked in those jobs are are going to have to uh, find other jobs. It's going to be a, a you know very painful adjustment. Hopefully, uh, policymakers uh, figure out ways to help those folks get the training and skills they need to move on to the next job. When you think back to uh, when the PPP was first, um, you know, when they start when the loans first started going out, there were a lot of small businesses who said, "Look, you know, we can't rehire within a two and a half month window." Obviously, that timeline has shifted now. Um, how much of that is now sort of prolonged the 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 downturn that we're seeing in, in the labor market. I mean, if these businesses have a longer window, are you seeing that they're likely not to hire until the end of the year or rehire until the end of the year? Well, I think the, the way I would uh, frame the impact of the Paycheck Protection Program, PPP, on the, on the labor market is that the benefit of the plan is probably – Peak. We're probably past the peak. Uh, that the businesses, the small businesses that took advantage of the program early on, and have rehired and have kept pe pe people on payroll, they, they uh, in some cases, you know, are are not going to get have the sales they need to maintain those payrolls and start laying off. But because of the changes to the program uh, more recently, we'll see some businesses start availing themselves of that, you know, going forward. So you got you have these countervailing forces. But on net, uh, I think it, it all plays out to the PPP's benefit to the labor market in terms of jobs, unemployment, the broader economy is probably the, 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 the peak of the benefit is probably behind us at this point. And, and while we're while we're looking at strictly at, at, at jobs right now, I mean, there's so many other factors that go into somebody's ability 
to return to work. Um, there's still question marks around how schools are going to be conducted, uh, depending on the, the county, the state, you know, how many of them are actually going to be returning. And, you know, parents have have been very vocal about the challenges of having to conduct these remote classes while also working from home. What have you been hearing about that element or that part of the picture and how that's likely to affect somebody's ability to return to work and and be productive in the way they would have been pre-pandemic? Well, I think there's just complete confusion. I don't think there's any plan at this point. I think people are just kind of waiting and watching, seeing how the virus plays out this summer and making it uh, as we get closer to the school year, th then make some kind of decision as to, you know, will, should schools open? And if they don't open, how will they conduct themselves? And, you know, what will we do? And it's not only K through 12, obviously universities and higher education have the same kind of questions and issues. So I, I think there's just going to be a lot of question marks until we kind of get up to August and uh, September and then see where we stand with the virus and, you know, how, how we think things are going. But you make a great point. That's another reason to suspect that the economy isn't going to get, you know, all those jobs back. The economy is just not going to get back to pre-COVID levels until we're on the other side of this pandemic. It's just hard to imagine that that's going to happen. And this is one other reason why. The social distancing, the uncertainty, you know, it's just, I think, going to be very difficult for people to really fully engage until uh, there's a vaccine or, or a therapy that we feel comfortable with. Yeah, still a lot of uncertainty ahead. Um, Mark Sandy, always appreciate talking to you. Uh, thanks so much for taking the time. Moody's yeah. Analyst, Chief Economist. Thank you. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.